you are now checking out The Win Podcast Where the everyday people are the celebrities So, so let's, let's get, get to know them, them. My junior high school English teacher, uh, Mr. Griffin, also known as I could tell I could say his first name now, Cornelius. <laughs> How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. You? Good, good, good. Once again, thank you for taking the time to do this. Right, no problem. Um, so I always explain like the, the connection, which I already did, but I want to go deeper into that. So I met you. Uh, I was it AJ now was it AJ five that was the name of the class I had to be yeah those so here's the story with me all right I was in like I think it was seven M one of some it, so M one was like I don't know supposedly the the elite class and like the numbers if top they, class yeah top of class of exactly <laughs> but if you was in four or five or six is like the level of education the mind wasn't working so it was like they put you in there he's a badass kid we're gonna put him in six I started off in M one so I was like. Creme de la creme. I was top on there. You were boozy. I was boozy. I was boozy. Yeah, I was boozy. <laughs> then they realized that my mind wasn't boozy. It was like, ah, he's joking around too much. I don't think he belonged in this class. I was like, no, nah, I could keep up. I could raise these 65. So, you know, I could bump him up to at least 68. So, it was like, nah, you're not going to cut it. So, here I am. They transferred me to I, uh, 7M5 or whatever, right? That I'm like, okay. They try to tell me that there's no difference in the class. It's still the same kids. Bro, I remember I walked into that class, and I'm seeing you trying to get everyone to pay attention. Everyone is, like, talking to each other. One is looking out the window. There's another one just writing on the desk. I was like, bro, these kids are not the same from M1. <laughs> they are just not. And, I was, and then I'm looking at you. I think this was the first time I ever was, like, next to a white person before. I'm going to be honest. I only seen that on Full House. <laughs> so I was like, this is, like, my first interaction one-on-one with a white person. And I'm like, who is this dude? And you just now became my English teacher. And through that time that I was getting to know you, you was, like, the awesome best teacher. And honestly, that was, like, the best class that I've ever been to. So our connection is you was my English teacher in junior high school. So I want to know, and now everyone else is going to get to know you, who is Cornelius Griffin? Um, first and foremost, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think of myself, I'm a very spiritual person. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up Catholic, so uh, I'm still very mm-hmm. devoutly Catholic. Mm-hmm. My wife, uh, we go to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. So first and foremost, that's, that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a father, mm-hmm. father of four kids, married. 15 years, I got four mm-hmm. boys, uh, and I'm an educator. Nice. And I've been educating uh, youth in Brownsville, Brooklyn, uh, for 18, 18 years now. Nice, nice. And I, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, because that's something that I want to dive right into is what made you want to become a teacher? Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I was going the business route. I was in college. I hit some economics class. I said, no, I'm out. Uh, You know, I came from a large, just Catholic, Mm -hmm. Irish Catholic family. Um, I had tons of cousins Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I was always around a lot of my cousins. I'm the old, one of the older ones. So a lot of my cousins are a lot younger. So, you know, I just, uh, that energy and uh, just being around kids just kind of, I think that, and my uncle was a teacher and he was kind of talking me into Mm -hmm. it. And I think that's kind of where I got pulled into, into Mm -hmm. that direction. And, um, yeah, that's definitely where it So it wasn't like, um... You was getting pulled into it, but it wasn't like, I don't know, maybe you was young or something came to you or whatever. Or like, I was like, I, you know, I like the aspect of teaching somehow. Like, yeah, you know what, what it is? I, you know, at community college, I took some English uh, English classes and I started to love kind of analyzing mm. literature. And I hated to read when I was in high school. I never <laughs> really. Liked, yeah, I never liked to read. <laughs> but then in college, like just analyzing literature in college, that's kind of where it started to draw me into you know maybe this is something i would like to do teaching english you know in high school you know mm. so that's kind of where also i got a pull you know got mm. kind of got pulled into with in in my community college english classes nice what what was something that like i guess inspired you so much uh learning from the, the literature or analyzing was there something where 
um, that you connected to, you made your 100% commitment. I was like, this is what I'm going to do now. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish I remembered the professor's yeah. name at this point so no, many fine. years ago, but uh, I don't really remember many college professors. It's funny. <laughs> but there was one. There was uh -oh. one at community college, and we were reading, like, Irish literature, mm. and that just struck me. You know, that just hit hit a nerve with me mm. and we were reading Joyce Dubliners and mm. uh, we were just picking that apart and I loved it and uh, but was it about him teaching that you was like I guess was so drawn to it I just you know uh, just going so deep into a text you know like just diving into it and right. and, and like picking apart every little detail about it and you know where, where I went to high school was just lectures you know gotcha. just people lecturing and maybe I didn't you know that's me didn't really hit with me right so you know, when I was in that class, it was a lot more mm -hmm. discussions and just, uh, you know, really diving in and mature discussions and students had kind of input. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I was like, I think I jumped in. No, I agree because I remember one, like, I'm forever humbled and grateful for teachers like you who I met in my life because you guys made a difference. It wasn't that you guys were just reading off, uh, like you said, lectures, like you really uh, brought your teachings to life. And I remember in college... Um, one of my professors says, you know, don't pick classics, classes, pick professors. And I was like, you are absolutely right. Because not everyone will have, I guess, that passion or a way of connecting with the students and what they're teaching. And you definitely, not only because of the kindness of your heart, but what you brought to us um, <clears throat> was so genuine that it, I, I guess that's why you was always loved. You know, yeah. here we are. You know, which I want to get into. Here we are looking at you. It's like, what? What is this? You know, at the time, what is this white boy doing this in this school? You know what I'm saying? Like, he, well, he's gonna teach us. Like, we're all from the hood and stuff like that. But even though I knew it was like probably tough for you, you stuck it out. And I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, man. That that was like the toughest year yeah. of my life. Mm. That year was even harder than the year my mother died. <laughs> wow! Wow! Damn! Damn! Really? That was one of the most trying, mm. difficult. Hardest times of my life. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to hold on to that because I want to get to that. <laughs> How, what made you go into Brownsville to teach? Was it something that was like, there's nothing available? It was like, you know what, let me give this a shot. Or you was just like, you know what, I want to go there. You know, I, got, you know, I just kind of have a, this is kind of a story that, you know, sometimes you feel like you're brought to a, a place. Wow. And I, I felt like I was always meant to be in Brownsville. So, mm. uh, you know, I grew up in Long Island, right on Valley Stream, right at the Queens Queens yeah. Nassau border, and I, I just remember, I think I must have been in 7th, 8th grade, and we were on a bus. I mm -hmm. think we were going to Philly, <laughs> and we were on this bus, and we drove through Brownsville, and I don't know why, that, that neighborhood just stuck out my Are you grade. serious? Yeah, and it always, like... That's a spiritual connection. It resonated with me, that neighborhood, and just, there was a connection there. How old were you? So, I was 7th, 8th grade. Oh, so, oh, wow. So, when I first, when I graduated college, and I was going to get a job in New York City... This guy kind of pulled me to the side and said, I got a job for you. It's in Brownsville. And I was like, you know, I, I just felt like this connection, like, yeah, I think I'm meant to be there. Wow. And, um, no, you, know, you were. And I remember sitting in this other guy's office, uh, Mr. Restivo. Uh, he was kind of <laughs> checking me in, doing yeah. all my paperwork. And he told me, get ready for war. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I just remember, like, my stomach just turning oh. because... I'm 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 a kid from Long Island who right. I went to Catholic school my whole life. Right. I was with nuns. <laughs> I went to Catholic high school. And now you come with like drug right. dealers, twelve year old drug dealers, <laughs> like pimps, hoes, like everything, guns, <laughs> even the staff. I'm yeah. talking about the staff and kids. <laughs> and here I am, this kid, uh, you know, Irish kid, wow. went to Catholic school. It was it just was just complete culture shock for me. Wow. Because I went from uh, you know uh, just a lot of discipline. Right, you know, right. Catholic schools run it differently. You know, public schools, they're 275. No. There, there wasn't much discipline. <laughs> they First of all, they haven't called 275. They said the five. Oh, yeah. Automatically, once they said the five, you was like, wait, what happened to the other numbers? So yeah. He was like, there's something up here. <laughs> and it was like right next to some projects and all that stuff. What was... <laughs> this is great. What was... How was your first day? Like, <laughs> was like... Uh, take me where you in the bathroom, put on your tie and all that stuff. Like, were you like... Nervous as shit. I was so nervous, man. I I, I was just I, I was I was terrified. I remember seeing that building every day and just my stomach just because 
It just you never knew. It's a tough. It, it teaches the same. It teaches the same way. You just you never know what you get. You never know what you're walking into. Right. You know the kids on any given day. They could be you know they could be having a moment. Yep. You know teaching us even 18 years later. You just never you know that that human element of teaching. Right. And I think that's what I love about teaching is this that there's there's so much humanity in it. Yes. Like it's it's never boring. Mm -hmm. You know it's it is tedious work. It's hard work, but you know uh, it's never a boring job. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I remember I was terrified. <laughs> so take me take me to uh your first your first i guess class you just walk in and you get the kids or whatever like was it so was it difficult that that one that the even off the first day so my first my first uh so i started in january so they put me they put me with like a co-teacher okay so i was supposed to you know learn from the yeah, co-teacher yeah. and just kind of like learn the, the rope yeah. and everything um, he's like smoking weed. He was like, "Let me tell you how to go." <laughs> um, so you know, the first that, that first you know that first beginning part wasn't so bad because she was she was a veteran teacher yeah. and she she knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I was just kind of like yeah. she always used to make fun of me. I was the good cop. She yeah. was the bad cop. You know, <laughs> so you know that that year was not that bad. Right. But that year, that the next year when, oh, when so you the the that's when I was kind of. Thrown into the fire, you know. Wow. I was just kind of like. Did you have, I guess, like some type of support from the staff, or they were just like, "Yo, yo, look, look, look at him. Let's just watch this crumble apart." I, I, you know, I felt like they wanted. You know, I felt like they were supporting. Okay. Uh, they wanted me to succeed. You okay. know, um, you know, I still have a lot of good relationships from people. You mm. know, from that school, so I, I felt like I was right. supported and succeed. I was just a crummy teacher. Yeah, yeah. I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at my worst. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, I think, I think I, I'm amazed that I have had an impact on you because no, I was I was like I, I didn't know I was didn't know what was going on half dude, the time. <laughs> dude, I tell you, like I remember just like the less I tell you what connected to me the most two things just the humanity that you brought to the teaching that connected to me. Um, you know what? You know because I was like ah school to school and I, and I learned a lot of things from you, but one of the biggest impacts that we hit off right away was the music. Like, I remember, just I, I always explain this to people, uh, how I got into Led Zeppelin. I will never forget who was the person. That was you. I remember, I think it was either after school or lunch or something like that. I just remember walking down the hallway and I'm here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this beat is hot. I'm thinking maybe about to be some raps. And I hear, ah, this thing is loud as shit and i walk in and you're just there with drumming <laughs> air drumming and i'm like and i was like who the fuck is that and you just looked at me and was like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> like, and i was like and i was like and you said you never heard of them i was like no but this sounds amazing that was that was it after that you got me into coldplay they was just like buzzing at that time and um radiohead radiohead yeah. um uh, of course all the phys i remember you gave me your physical graffiti cd um i, and love, I love this still love that album. <laughs> so i was like you open up a whole new because mind you i was always connected to like the oldies so my my uncle brought those things to me in a couple rock and roll things but this was a whole different world and I'm like, I didn't even know who is this person and we went on to John Bonham and you also shared like how you was a drummer and how you love drumming. Uh, so to me, those are the two biggest connections was the humanity that you brought and your teachings. It wasn't so much about like, you know, the text or whatever you was like, you know, reading from. It was like how you was transferring that information to us. That was like, that's dope. And then the music. I want to know why, what, what was so challenging for you and that first, oh wait, that second year when you had the class to yourself, um, you know, I, you know, I'm just, I'm too nice, <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm not a, I, I, I'm not a person, I, I, I'm not a person who could really be mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you know that that's. I'm still a struggle as a teacher right. that, you know, I come across. But like you said, I, I try to build that rapport and mm -hmm. I try to build those relationships. And, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I try to, you know, get everybody pulling on my team and, and, yeah. and just that respect that I try to build. Um, you know, and I think I'm a lot better at it right. than I was 18 <clears throat> years ago. Of course, because you get um, better with as you keep on doing it. Yeah, I just, you know, I was, I was just drowning, man. Mm -hmm. I was... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Why? Why didn't you quit? I, there was there moments there. You was like, you know, I don't think I'm gonna. Last I remember here. one moment, man, that year where, man, they, they you, you got that class just broke me, and I mm-hmm. remember being. I was. Just, I remember you cried. I remember yeah, there was a tearful moment I, there, and remember, we all. I, th- you know what? I think that was a shift for us too. I'm gonna let you finish, but yeah. I think I'm gonna let you know what I felt that day. I, I'm, you know, I'm a man who cried. You, yeah. so you guys broke me that day. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being. I was a broken shell of a man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a few uh, a few years ago. Was it Dominic? You remember? Dominic? Yes. He came to my new school, uh-huh. so I thought I left that shit behind. <laughs> I hear Dominic. Yo, remember that day you cried? I'm like, shut up, Dominic. <laughs> Don't bring that shit up in here. <laughs> Ten years later, I got a reputation here. <laughs> still oh my god. Um, man, that, that I just remember. I don't know. It's just building and building mm-hmm. and just. Um, you know, how I stayed with it after that, I don't know. Mm. I sometimes look back, how did I keep doing this? Yeah, what made you, after having that breakdown, what made you, I guess, go I, back into the gym? It's like, you know what, tomorrow's another day. And Like I said, I, I really feel like I had like, a, a deep commitment to Brownsville. Mm. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to be a quitter. Right. You know, I wanted to see the way, you know, I want to see my way through it. Yeah. You know, you know I, I felt like, you know, I, what would I get from quitting at that moment? Right. And, uh you know, I just I had to persevere, man. Mm-hmm. I had to I had yeah. to be resilient, and and you know, you know, it made me stronger. You know, yeah, it made me tougher. Absolutely. You know, whether it's gonna kill you, it's gonna make you stronger. Yep. So uh, you know, uh, you know, I just persevered, and you I, know, I think that that day, you know, just looking back, I just felt like, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was a shift after that day because yeah. I felt like. You know, we we got silent. We got quiet. We was like, yo, Mr. Griffin's crying. Yeah. And one, I don't think we ever saw, like, someone cry in front of us like that. Not only, like, a teacher. Because no matter how much we gave teachers a hard time, we do. Are, we are looking up to you, you yeah. know, and listening to you. And to see that was like, yo, we need to fucking chill. Not to say that we still wasn't bad, but <laughs> I think we cut that into half. And like we made it uh, a little easier. I want to say you didn't have yeah. had a good time after, but we I, there was a shift in that classroom. It was yeah. like he doesn't deserve this. You know, you know, teaching's grueling, man. It, it's you know what people don't get about teaching is just how grueling it mm. is. It's tedious. It's day in, it's day out. You know, mm-hmm. I always liken it to like Sisyphus rolling the boulder up yeah, the, yeah. the hill. And that thing comes back, and then you got to roll it back up mm. again. You know, it's like every day, it's just, it's a different, it's a grind, man. Mm. And then, you know, like, and it, it's just, it's really, it's difficult. You know, yeah. it's not, a, it's not an easy profession. What makes you want to stay? I know you said you, you feel like you commit, you know, you have a, a commitment and a connection to Brownsville. But, you know, my thing is that you're 18 years in yeah. the same area. So I can understand you can have five years commitment or three years, whatever. You know, I did my time. Mm-hmm. But you had, I know, probably many opportunities to leave. What makes you stay and, and make these numbers? Well, 18 funny. years. One year I did leave because, remember, two, five, the five was closing down. Yes. So I took a chance and went to a charter school. Oh, so. And I, I, so I went to Queens Village for one year. Wow. And, um, you know, the charter schools, man, they just work you. Mm-hmm. And it was from like seven thirty to one thirty yeah. straight. Here's a fifteen minute break. Get back in the class. Uh, yeah, it was after, a yo at the five. At, you don't do that. Nah, 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 nah. We got some union in here. <laughs> <laughs> There's some rights. <laughs> so at, after my year there, I uh, you know I, I left, and it's funny. Once again, I know somebody. We got a job. Guess where? Brownsville. <laughs> Brownsville. And it's that just, same dude. And, 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 and it was somebody else. You ready for war again? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, it, and it, it was just it was Brownsville calling me back mm. again, and uh, and this, now this is the school. You know, I've been in this school for mm. you know, what has it been? Almost 14, 15 years at this point. So you know, Brownsville just it called me back. Wow. You know, I left, but like it called me, it called me back and. Um, you know, what What makes me keep doing this is I've had some kids go on to do some great things, man. Mm. I've had kids go to Vanderbilt, Cornell, mm. you know. You see these great success stories, yeah. you know. And, and I see I see my students doing these amazing things. Mm. They're educators now. And, and I see, like, you know, now, now I'm at the point in my career where I can say, wow, you know, I think I've had some impact. Mm. You know, I can see, you know, like, kind of things happening now. Right. Like, and kids doing really well. And I see them all on Facebook and yeah, social yeah. media. Yeah, and, yeah. and they're doing they're doing big things. Yeah, and, I mean, that's, know, and I, I hope to think, you know, I had some part in it. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I'm telling you, like, 100%. Yeah, that's the humility in yeah, me. Yeah, you, you know, definitely play the part. Whether, n- not only in my life, but I'm telling you, in many people, 
lives, you know. And coming to see you do your shows, yeah. and you know, I, I've gone to see. I saw Dwayne yeah. do his, his rap thing, yeah. and you know, I'm just you know, I'm just proud of all my kids, yeah. and you know, and I gotta remember sometimes you guys are just kids. Yeah, you're teenagers. Yeah. You know, you, you guys are just still, kids. You, was, I was, I was like, a kid. I was twelve. Well, how old were I was you? A kid. I was like twelve. I think twelve or thirteen. I was a kid. I was twenty two years old when I when I had you. I was like twenty two years old. I was like wow. I was a baby. <laughs> you know, and I, and I, and that year that I had you, I, you know, you know, I think you know that that moment that I had where I broke. Yeah, that was a tough year for me because mm. that that was the year. I don't know if you remember this, no. but I remember it like in my mind man that was that was 9-11 I remember one of our first days of school yes was 9-11 and I wow. remember I shut everything down and we, we were watching we were listening to the radio wow. that I remember that day because I was in Spanish class with Miss O'Hagan and yeah. she just got a phone call and she just started crying immediately yeah. and they're like she uh you know what happened but thankfully, her husband uh, meeting got canceled or something wow. that day, yeah. and something. But she, but she didn't know that until probably like maybe an hour later. All she heard was like, "Yo, this is happening." She knew he was supposed to be over there. Yeah. So I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, but you know, for me, you know, I don't know if you remember no. this, but my uncle passed. Oh in, wow! In, in, in I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, and this was an uncle who, when my mother passed, mm -hmm. he was the, he was the man who kind of stood up mm. and and really took care of him and my aunt took care of my family. Wow. So like when he lost, it was like kind of like you know really it was right. like. But you didn't know. When you was watching what was going, you didn't know that happened. I knew he worked there. He worked it, but yeah, you didn't. but I didn't have yeah. any idea wow. at that point. I, that, like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you were just with the kids, just watching. Like I remember listening wow. with you guys, and you know, I knew I had, I knew two people that were in in, in the wow. in the twin towers that day. And your uncle, uh, what did he do for? Uh, he worked. Uh, he was on that company, oh, Cantor Fitzgerald, gotcha. that lost like everybody. What was, uh, I guess, you know, because it seems like you guys has a connection. What was something that you learned from him that you value to this? To this family, day. man, family, loyalty, and, loyalty, and just taking care. You know, he's not my—he wasn't my blood uncle, but he treated me, you know, like oh, blood, wow. right? And he, when my mom passed, he told my mom before she had passed, mm -hmm. you know, I, I got these kids, you know, they, they're wow. gonna, I'm gonna take care of them. So, you know, that, it seems like uh, so that was like seven. You know, my mom passed when I was 15, mm -hmm. so it was like seven years, seven, eight yeah. years later that he passed. It seems, and like then I'm in the midst of, <laughs> I'm in the midst of the fire, <laughs> fire, the gunshot going off, and all that stuff. It seems like you guys are like, are and the family have these beautiful hearts, you yeah. know, and, and and it passes on to who you are as a person, but also when you once again the connection and your teachings, and that's what um, I always saw as well. Um, what was like the biggest difference that not only like uh, system wise, right, but the the difference that you felt when you was working at the other place in Queens, the charter school. And then I guess what what was missing for you in that school that you felt like it was a no brainer to like, nah, I'm going back to Brownsville. I got the call. Um, I just I I like the kids in Brownsville. They're mm. real. Mm. Um, they say it how it is. Yeah, the honesty. Um, the honesty. Um, I really respect that. Um, I love the toughness of the kids. Right. You know. You know, I'm just, I just I'm yeah. drawn to that neighborhood. That that yeah. I always I tell my you know some of my coworkers this I, Brownsville is like a second home to me. Mm. <laughs> I walk down the streets now, yeah. you know, in Brownsville. You know, I bump into kids <laughs> left and right wow. all the time. What was the biggest? Uh, I've taught I've taught <clears throat> whole families now. I've taught whole families. I got a <laughs> I got insane. a girl. Um, I'm teaching this year in eighth grade. I I taught her mother. She must have been in school with you. Wow. I'm, so I'm teaching her daughter now. Like I'm I'm teaching whole families how, how, now. How, how, Generations how now. <laughs> <laughs> I should be the president of Brown. I should get a, I should get a key, motherfucker. <laughs> I, you should. You be. You should get the key to Brown. But you know how many lives you touch. You're like so under. You're like uh, the white Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Just bring her. Come on, we're gonna teach everybody here. Come on with me. Um, but that's that. How how do you feel when you see that? Like another generation. It's crazy, uh, you know. It's you know, it's it speaks just to mm. my commitment right. to that neighborhood, and you know, you know where I could have quit and where I could have walked right. away, and you know. Well, you know, to to me, that is that that to me that is just like so mind-boggling, but so admirable how you didn't quit. 
Like, hey. you didn't quit. What do they say in Brownsville? Oh, never, I never ran, never will. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Brownsville, never ran, I could have ran. <laughs> <laughs> you cried, but you did. You cried, <laughs> but you, you didn't run. <laughs> What what when you when you are what do you want out of students when you when you're teaching and or just making a connection with them what do you want from them? I just I want respect. I want you know uh, I want to build that connection. I, you know I you know, I'm I want of course I want to get kids ready for college and, and 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 to really but I also you know I hope you know my what you said yeah. like my my spirit you know I hope. Mm. You know, kids, you know, I, I would like to have an impact on them socially as well. Mm. And, you know, you know, that's that's my big thing. Just a, mm. like an all-around student, not just like, uh, you know, getting them ready for school, mm. but just an all-around student, like how to treat people, just, yeah. you know, how to be respectful, you know, you know, just... You know that kind yeah. of stuff too. Just make the all the total person. Mm -hmm. It's not just all about you know. I can't get obsessed with you know test scores right. and you know because <coughs> that's because that's what they want. You know right. they, they want to make you obsessed about these things. You know you know why why aren't and I love that because why aren't you so obsessed with the, the numbers on the on the fucking paper the scores? Yeah, you know I worry about it. You yeah, know, of when, when those numbers come out, I want to look and see. Yeah, you yeah. know and, and and you know. I'm, but, you know, I, I just want to see these kids mature and, mm -hmm. and just, you know, uh, become, you know, a total person, you know, mm -hmm. who, you know, can go out into the world and just, you know, uh, yeah. be successful. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and I see that. Do you, do you feel, I think you pretty much, I think, kind of like touched on it, but um, do you feel making an impact uh, with a student, I guess, uh, like, Spiritually or hum, 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 in a humane way is more important than trying to feed a test down them. I think so. Right. I no. Put, yeah. What no. I, I. I. That's my priority first. You mm. know. Is is. You know, and, and you know that goes back to my Catholic Christian right. values, like treat people as you'd want to be treated, and mm -hmm. you know that's kind of way I approach things. And you know, I hope you know students notice that you know that's the way I go about my business, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and just hopefully they learn to treat people the way they want right. to be treated. You know, in the in the long run, you know. Um, no, I I agree because, like I said, like you, your work speaks for itself. You know, uh, how many success stories you see, or how many people, the impact that you make. Whether it's not being cocky or whatever, or what, it's just no. You you see by being who and what you are, and being kind and interested, and in going the extra mile to get to know these kids. These kids are just not a number in the system to you. They are a, a human person, a human being. And you know, some of these kids are coming from some you know some messed up places. You mm -hmm. know, they, you know, they some of these kids are, are damaged goods. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta. Yeah. Yeah, treat them with kindness, you know, right. and, and, you know, can't be always yelling at them and screaming at right, them and, right. you know, that, that's because, you know, they want to hear something different sometimes mm. and, you know, you know, so that's, you know, that my priority always, is always to treat, that's my first thing is treat kids with kindness mm. and, uh, you know, compassion and empathy and, mm. and then, you know, the test scores and yeah, that's important, but yeah. that's my, that's always has been my priority. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Do you find uh, raising your teach raising your kids teaching your kids very similar to uh, teaching uh, kids in the in the schools or is two different things for you? I always wanted to ask you that. How's the what's the difference? I guess in similarities between that. It's funny. I, I think I'm a little stricter with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I guess because they're mine. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and I feel a certain more of a, yeah. uh, a right to be mm -hmm. you know a lot stricter with them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, you know, so I, I think that's one way, but I, you know, I'm also obviously, yeah. you know, treat my kids the same way, but you know, I, you know, my, my wife and I definitely are a little stricter with them, mm, right? You know, like my 12 year old, he, he still gets dry to school, I don't <laughs> let him walk to school. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know? so yeah, it's, so there's a discipline difference between teaching your kids and teaching, uh, yeah, I think the, I, I'm just a little <clears throat> more firm, right? A lot more firm, it makes now, I'm more fir sense. I'm firm in the classroom, but a lot more firm. Right. You know, uh, with my own kids, because nice. they're mine. You know? Absolutely. You know, so what um, do you feel is harder to teach now or in the past? Because you know, like now there's phones, there's all this other, uh, all this stuff, and actually the media, the music, whatever it is. Do you find maybe it's harder now for you to actually? I think it's harder now. Harder. Yeah, the phones. Mm -hmm. um, 
kids are so distracted. Mm. You know, their their minds are, are are like programmed now to switch from one thing to the next thing. Mm. You know, it's hard to get them to really focus. You know, how, how do you, how do you how do you make it work for you in those type of things? Um, or try because I know it's a it's an everyday now everyday thing now to like you're teaching and also trying to discipline them. Yeah, you try to you know <laughs> you incorporate stuff and in, obviously visuals mm. and stuff in the classroom. Um, you know, I've got you know one thing that I kind of shifted to is just doing much smaller mm. readings. Gotcha. Um, where we could just kind of break it down and, and uh, you know, but you know, it, you're it seeing like the attention span is like now even shorter. Yeah, I definitely. Right. So you know, you, you, you gotta you gotta cram like try to do a, a synopsis. <laughs> Keep it like yeah, short and sweet. It's hard to wow. you can't like I, in the past I would try to read whole right. novels. Now it's just like little pieces of it wow. uh, to kind of string it all together because right. you know it, it, and and then show some movies yeah. and back that up or you know music no it makes or sense because uh, you you seeing it now that you know and in, in the in the people or even like on Facebook like if you share an article it's already telling you it's a two minute read yeah. so it's like telling you like don't worry it's not an hour or even anything that you're seeing everything is condensed so much smaller so our attention span. Is like so small now that we're quick to look to something else, and then yeah. they want to say it's ADHD ADHD or whatever it is. I'm just like, no, I'm I just guilty think, of it too. <laughs> I just think it's just how the world is going. Yeah, I'm like that too. Yeah, now, you know, I mean, I used to be like that too as well and stuff like that. But if something's good, I'm gonna pay attention to yeah, it. Yeah. But I think also like not only just us, but I think how the world is going, how media is consumed now. They want there is like it's like they're almost. Molding our minds to make it even smaller to what we pay attention to. Oh, I definitely agree. <clears throat> what has, when you look back, man, and you look at all the 18 years uh, that you've been teaching, what has you, you, you becoming a teacher and actually teaching, because what has, what did that teach you? Yeah, you could take a second. Man, this is <laughs> when you, Yeah, when you just look at those 18 years, man, from the first time those tears I don't want to bring it back but those tears <laughs> <laughs> when you look back and even the success stories what has teaching taught you you know just I just um, just just the faith in humanity you mm -hmm. know we I teach in a rough neighborhood mm -hmm. the kids are great mm. You know, I, I, I find goodness in all of them. Mm. And, you know, and, and, you know, it's just, they're just great kids. And um, so, you know, that's one thing, just, just how good people are. Mm. People I think are, people are good. Yeah. You know, I, I think to, to, to nail it is for you, uh, never judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Like that famous saying, and you went in there, not even, you knew the situation, right? But you still went in there because you had this connection. But you went in there with this heart, not judging these kids, not judging the area. You knew it was bad. You know what you go into. But he's like, nah, there's something here, and I either can make a difference, or I so and I also can learn from this. And that's I'm the same way now. Like that's I'm always looking for goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm never I'm not someone who looks for negativity. Mm -hmm. I try to find the, you know the goodness mm -hmm. in everyone, mm -hmm. and and I try to make that work for me. Mm -hmm. And you know. Kids are great. Uh, you know, I love the kids. I I've, I've been blessed to teach just great kids, man. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, a, real, it's a real treasure, yeah. to, to, you know, the, the relationships I've had, just to see what they become. You know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Mm. It's, when you put yourself out there and, you know, you, you get dirty with humanity, <laughs> man, you, you see such beauty, you know. Mm. It's nice to work. work. I like just working with people, man. Mm. You know. No, it shows. And as as like yeah, I said, it's not right. easy. So I've learned perseverance. Yeah. I've learned, learned resilience. Uh, I've learned to just kind of get through, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, sometimes it's just hard, you know. Mm -hmm. Like right now, this point in the year, is always hard when it's cold. It's yeah. winter. You know, summer's far away. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> yeah. <not> hard. <laughs> um, so now we got to know you, man. And thank you for sharing so much honesty. Um, it, it, it's been mind-boggling and, and beautiful. And right now, we're going to go to one of the first segments of the interview. Uh, and the first segment is called uh, Let's Look Inside. And the first question for that segment is, is there a meaning to life? And if so, what is it to you? Meaning to life. Yeah. If um, there's a meaning. Deep with yeah, 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 yeah well, I got to. <laughs> if there's a meaning to life. If so, what is it to you? It could be something so simple, you know. Um, 
to me, to me, the meaning mm. of life is, you know, treating people well, mm. treating people with so. respect, you know, uh, don't judge people. That's mm. one of my big things. I, I, I don't judge people. Um, just treat, treat everybody with respect, you know. Mm. Uh, and if you live like if you live life like that, whatever happens to us right. when we when we die, yeah. you know, I, I believe yeah. there is, you know, some yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is this, a place yeah, after yeah. this. Right, right. So I feel if if I live that way and I treat people the way that I want to be treated and I treat them well, I hope there's a place for me. Mm. <laughs> they will be. They definitely you know, will I, be. You know, I, I just think that's the meaning of life, man. Mm. I think sad man you see you see things that happen like in my neighborhood uh mm. you know on All 90th street yeah. and on the subway the, you see that stuff and man it just breaks my heart man mm. these young kids and you know it's it's just sad you yeah. know They're like just you know that really hurts me when i yeah. saw that stuff so you know like you know just treating people well man life is too short we're only mm. on this earth for so yep. short of a time and you don't even know and i think yeah. my mother's my mother's death really tore me because my mother died she was like 38 mm. you know uh, so where she, she died of she had breast cancer okay so you know I, I think that that moment had just a pivotal impact on just kind of the way i, I view life mm. and um you know it just really has shaped me as a human being and mm. you know and i think that's part of god's plan you right. know she was taken from me but it mm. shaped my life and right. how i go about things so it was a learning experience it was a learning experience. so in that moment too like you 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 just pretty much it clicked for you it's like yo our yeah. time it's short it's short i saw my mom suffering man i was yeah. like, you know i saw things i shouldn't have been seeing you know right. it was tough right so you know life's short we're only here on this earth for a short amount of time Make make it enjoyable for mm. people, you know. Like, you know, just yeah. make it a better world for everybody, yep. so we can enjoy what what we have here. And that's funny because this goes right into the second question that I have for that segment. If you could teach everyone in the world one concept, what concept will have the biggest positive impact on humanity? Kindness. Jesus. <laughs> no, but it's true. And I think people need to learn a little humility. Mm. You need to be able to laugh at yourself. Mm. So I could sit up here and laugh that I cried in front of a bunch of teenagers. <laughs> yep. And this shit's going on the podcast. Yep. And I'll laugh about it because I'm humble. Mm. Uh, and, you know, that that did happen. And yeah. there's a humility there. you got to laugh at yourself. Of course. Of but course. you got to treat people. There's got to be kindness, mm -hmm. you know. So I would say I definitely if I could teach people... Definitely kindness, I compassion, empathy, you know? Mm, I love it. I love it, man. So the next segment I have uh, is <coughs> called Words from My Spiritual Teacher, Guru Enlightenment. Uh, as you guys already know, she's my spiritual teacher, and she teaches me spirituality, and she teaches a lot of workshops, and they're all free. By this time now, you guys probably checked her out on her website, and all her information will be in the description. I'm going to read a passage from her book, uh, which is Guide to Finding Answers into the Unknown. And... It goes hard. One of the hardest thing to do is hear. We feel we know everything. No one can tell us anything. While others prefer going through their own experience, experiences, learning from others. Learning from others is also a learning experience within itself. How do you feel hearing that? Yeah, I mean, I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly learning from others. Uh, I learn more from, you know, my students have taught me more, uh, you know, about life mm. and, and then, you know, uh, you know, you know. To me, if I started to cut you off, right? Yeah. Because I want to get on it. I just got it in my head. To me, reading this kind of like sums up like your life in a sense up to now. You know, you had... This, like one of the hardest things is to pay attention to what I call your spirit. You know, you may call it intuition or God, what you believe in, right? Like you had this connection. Go to Brownsville. A lot of people, they'll get these messages or this, this feeling and they won't hear it. They'll hear it, but they ignore it. You heard it. And you're just like, all right, there's going to be something here. I don't know what it is. And in the end, you learn from all the experiences by you actually hearing the message that you had to hear to go there and that following that feeling. And through that, you made a difference in your life and also many people's lives. Because let's say you you could have never went there. You mm. could have had a whole different story. You would have not 
felt maybe as fulfilled as you feel right now. Right. If you never would have did that and made that choice, heard the message, and learned from these experiences. You gotta listen to your calling. <clears throat> Uh, that's one of the most important things. Like, if you <laughs> feel like you're being called somewhere, there's a reason for it. There's mm-hmm. A greater purpose, you mm-hmm. know, than, than you might ever understand. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my brother just became a priest. He had a calling. Nice. He, uh, when he was a little kid, he was he was always setting up altars to marry. Wow. He, he must have been like six, seven years old. He was connected already. And he graduated high school, joined a religious community, and he's become a priest now. He had this calling, you know, wow. and he just... You know, I think it's. I think people should listen to those calls because I feel like I had a calling. My brother obviously had a calling. Yeah. You know, it's important to listen to calls. It's, it's, sometimes you're being directed yep. to a place. You know, but you don't know why. Yep. But you know, you know, you know that that's, this is pretty much the ending of the Win Podcast. But before I go, man. Um, I just want to say, Mr. Griffin, I love you so much. Like, you know, I got much love for you, man. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this, but man, thank you, like, for all the work that you have done um, in the community with these kids, with yourself, your life, and your kids, with my life. You know, my life would have been different if I would have never met you. You know, one hundred percent. You know, and I, I thank you because you taught me so much. I remember we had, you know, I, I'll keep his name out of it, but we had another teacher, right, on the podcast before, and I was trying to drill to him, uh, we had a back and forth about passion, and I was like, no, man, like, not every teacher has it, and he was saying that, you know, well, he doesn't know any other way how to teach, and I'm telling you, that's that's passion, and, you know, he was trying to negate it, it's like, no, this is how, and I'm like, listen, I, I can't, I can't agree with you with that because if I agree with you that you just teach like whatever, then I'm disrespecting Mr. Griffin. I'm disrespecting Mr. Bartoldis. I'm disrespecting Mr. Lattice. I'm disrespecting all these teachers that made an impact in my life. And like I got emotional because like I just saw like if I agreed with that, all the work that you guys have did for me, it would have been wiped away. And I, was, I couldn't do that. I was yeah. like, that's passion bro like mr griffin staying after school to like teach me certain things musically he didn't have to fucking do that he could have just left you know mr bertold is teaching me the guitar after school didn't have to do that that's passion that's a a commitment that's a connection that's come from the heart and i just want to say thank you so much for you know showing and, and and lending and giving my your heart to all of us man like I can't thank you enough, and you know, I I feel like maybe this could be like one of the smallest thank yous for like your story has to be out there because not even you, you know, taught me those things, but you even came back to support me in like the shows that I do on stage, and man, that's like one of the biggest. I I just want to say thank you. I don't want to keep on getting all choked up. But like, thank you no. so much, man. I'm humble that I bow to you, man. You're welcome. Thank you. I mean, this is why I do this. You know, I I I hope. You know, and that's the thing about it. You know, a lot of things you don't see the impact you have, right. but you know you're having an impact. You know, yeah. And I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to do this and and to have these impacts. You know, on on, on kids' lives, and you know, hopefully I get to do this for a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's but it's you know very humble. You know, teaching is a humbling job, and you know it's it's a great it's great work. And uh, if you have a calling for it. And you're passionate about it. You should definitely do it because you, you can have such mm-hmm. such reach, right? You know, you're just such an impact on, on on your students, you know, in their future, and, and it's just it's beautiful. Thank you for checking out the episode. Please help us out by subscribing to our podcast, writing a review, sharing with a friend, or leaving a comment. Thank you. This will help us so much.